Millions are yet to acknowledge and accept that there is a God in heaven. Have you considered that out of the ashes of the coronavirus could rise a new era of acceptance and reverence for the God of heaven? God exists. That is our say-so. As a believer in God, the spiritual graces of faith and hope and love are central to your spiritual well-being. You are the evidence that sufferings fade in the light of the abundant life our Lord Jesus Christ came into this world to offer you and to offer me. Hallelujah. Let's talk about life and death. In 2004, the Indian Ocean tsunami took 280,000 lives. In Haiti, in 2010, 316,000 died in that earthquake. 30 million Chinese starved to death from the famine in that land during 1959 and 1962. The Syrian civil war has 570,000 deaths so far. You and I must care deeply about the suffering and the pain on the earth. We must care deeply about the real emotional anguish and suffering taking place right now in our world. It's tragic to even think about the impact of the coronavirus epidemic. People are dying. Good health has been stolen. Families and nations are destroyed. Didn't Jesus say, Satan has come to kill, to steal and destroy. But I have come that you might have life abundantly. Let's talk about the spiritual and the natural. The structure of the coronavirus contains the spike. I think all of us have seen that. The membrane, the envelope, and the nuclear capsid proteins, visible only through a microscope. You see, pure logic or technology can calculate and explain actual physical reality. But no scientific microscope has the power to examine spiritual capability, the divine miraculous power of our loving God. God rescues his own in times of distress. No telescope has the lens, no human intellect has the knowledge, insight or wisdom to track and trace how the God of the universe can mysteriously deliver his people on the earth. In these perilous times of physical and emotional suffering in the world, let his people pray. Let's look for a brief while at miracles by the hand of God all over the earth. This is what we're praying for. Have you forgotten? that Psalm 23 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You will comfort me. But Jesus came not only for those who believe in him, he came for the whole wide world. And perhaps, only God knows, this is a time in history when faith and trust and belief in him will rise. As sickness and death stalk the nations of the world, have you pondered that this could be a great hour for the people who know their God? The world is so desperate, it will welcome any help it can get from any quarter. As instruments in the Master's hand, through the power of our prayer and the word of our testimony, we could usher in by the Holy Ghost a mighty work that no people have ever seen or did in our lifetime. This is a great hour for us who believe in the supernatural power of God. What is a miracle? It is an extraordinary and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws and is a direct divine action or intervention. Who can ask for a divine supernatural intervention? Those who believe in a supernatural God. Only the hand of God can save country after country from falling over like dominoes, destined for drawn-out doom. The word of God in 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. The question the only question is, are we praying for a miracle of the healing of the peoples and the nations of the world? This land, the land of our birth and the land of our adoption, and lands all over the earth. Let's look for a second at suffering and how terrible it is. God knows our suffering 
end our pain in this lurking threat of infection from the coronavirus. Jesus, who is God, he bore physical and emotional suffering. His physical agony throughout his crucifixion was in his disfigured face and frame. He was marred past human recognition. In his time of deepest emotional anguish, all the disciples abandoned him and fled. Let's talk about the duration of suffering. While it lasts, suffering is painful. There is physical pain and suffering, and there is emotional pain and suffering. How can we ever know the depth of spiritual suffering that Jesus experienced? He cried from the cross to his Father, Why have you turned your face from me? So through Christ Jesus, God knew what pain and suffering was. Think about this beautiful truth. Since he has gone through all the suffering and the testing, he can help us. When we are going through physical, emotional and spiritual suffering, he will come to our aid. There's also another truth about suffering. It finishes, it passes, it doesn't last forever. Jesus rose from the dead and has full glory at the right hand of God right now. Through it all, many believers in Christ enjoy continued abundant life in Jesus, even through all the turmoil and all the pain. And for those who die in the Lord, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. Whatever the nature of the pain or suffering, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and the righteous seek refuge in God. Looking now at spiritual well-being and the graces for spiritual well-being, there are a few things that we must remember. Take away our faith, our hope, and our love that we have in our God, and the result is spiritual suffering, alienation from God, plagued by evil thoughts and evil deeds, suffering the predicament of being his enemies. Your spiritual well-being is part of the abundant life Jesus Christ came and gave you when you received him as Lord and Savior. In God, through Jesus Christ, we have free access to the spiritual graces of faith, of love, and of hope. Well, faith, hope, and love. Your outlook, your inspiration, your self-esteem, your identity, your life satisfaction, and your happiness. These are embedded in your spiritual well-being. Let me talk a little bit about faith, and then hope, and then love. Faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, impossible to believe that He exists and rewards those who seek Him. At this unusual time when we are trusting God to do unusual things, faith says, I know my Lord will make a way for me, and my line, and this nation, and the nation of my birth, and the nations of this world. Hope, who among us does not know the dark nights of deep doubts and fears? Hope in God is not moved by circumstances or what the eyes see. My God is invisible. Your life, my life, our lives, in our lives there's the evidence of His faithfulness, that it is real. It's not invisible. Hope tells me that God is on my side. Now, about love. We enjoy the sacred privilege of spiritual well-being. Remember that phrase, spiritual well-being. When we love God, when we have a relationship with God, when we connect to a spiritual community, when we receive and give love, when we participate in religious activities, love. These spiritual graces of faith, hope, and love, they combine to enrich our lives daily. They bring purpose and fulfillment and a sense of destiny into our lives. They help us to relate to people and to nature. They keep us standing in the face of the storm. They keep us in Jesus, standing in the face of a storm. Talk now about so much suffering in the world. Adam and Eve used their free will and they sinned. People make choices. Scientists make choices. Politicians make choices. Dictators make choices. Those whose God is mammon, they make choices. And their choices impact people and nations and the world. 
Then why can't God fix the things that are wrong in the world, so many people ask? Well, just think about one current example to answer that question. Climate change. Human beings, not God, have burnt fossil fuels, stripped forests bare, polluted the rivers and the oceans. Temperatures rise and the ice caps melt as greenhouse gases go into the Earth's atmosphere and deplete the ozone layer. God is a good God. God didn't do that. In John 10.10, Jesus Christ tells us, The thief came to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full, abundant life. Say a little bit now about don't blame God. It's not God who causes evil or suffering in this world, but people who oppose the desire and the rules of society and the commandments and guidelines of God. God does not tempt humans to do wrong. Some choose to blame suffering, pain and struggles in this world. Blame it on God. But consider this. He is a loving God who wants to be our spiritual father. To reject God and his hand of loving spiritual fatherly friendship and the forgiveness he offers, that impacts on how we live our lives. In God, you find morality, you find truth, and you find destiny. Reject God and you open yourself to many other things that have negative impacts on your future and your destiny and your well-being. On a lighter note, and I trust you will allow me that, for those who say that there can't be a God, look at the suffering he allows. Ever wondered why God doesn't defend himself against his critics? Yes, some will say, because God is God. Others say, well, perhaps whether we end up in heaven or hell, we'll finally know then and we'll see for ourselves whether God is real and whether there is a God. God is God. You may have heard this joke of a drowning person who's stranded and nobody else seems to be anywhere near to save this person and the person cries out to heaven, God, please save me. I'm coming to a close now and I want to talk about God is with us. Science, and we've talked a lot about science and the scientific mind and we've tried to show that there are spiritual things and there are natural things. Science deals with the natural world and faith or religion deals with the spiritual and the supernatural. Interestingly, thousands of scientists maintain their spiritual beliefs without giving up their religious faith. And science is working feverishly to arrest this pandemic. We must acknowledge that. Have you considered that our prayers to our God to heal the world and heal the nations of the world and stop this horrendous virus in its track, that our prayers can lead scientists to discover a cure to the coronavirus and recovery for those who are presently close to danger. God the Son came down to this world to give us life, to give us life to the full, a rich and satisfying life in Him, an abundant life. And He promised something that we must never forget. When the pain and the trauma and the millions of posts on every kind of platform frighten us. Remember, Jesus Christ promised. He said, I will be with you always. Right now, it is always. Yesterday, it was always. Tomorrow, it will be always. Our Lord Jesus Christ has been, is now, and will always be with us. There is a God in heaven. When this virus has passed, and normality returns to the world, may a new order take form. May it be that the people of the world enter a new era of acceptance and reverence for this God of heaven, whose Son came to us as Jesus Christ. The scriptures say, and this is an encouragement to all who believe, let us then hold firmly to the faith we profess, for we have a great high priest who has gone into the very presence of God, Jesus, the Son of God. Our high priest is not one who cannot feel sympathy for our weakness. On the contrary, we have a high priest who was tempted and tried and suffered in every way, but he did not sin. 
and he did not give up. Let us have confidence then and approach God's throne where there is grace. There we will receive mercy and we will find grace to help us just at this painful time when we need it most. The throne of grace is where the human spirit places our spiritual prayers and our desires before God by the help of the Holy Ghost. We pray with submission, humility, reverence, and a boldness that is not arrogant to be acceptable to the Holy God of the universe. Our prayers must be sprinkled by the blood of the Lamb, Christ Jesus. Since the scriptures set out God's great and precious promises, we ask and seek and knock, trusting that in His great mercy, God will answer our prayers. Now the prayer. You are our fortress. You are our refuge. You are our protector, my God. We trust you in these times of danger, peril, and fear. Please stand between us and the prowling coronavirus. Send your word to heal those affected by it, that they might recover. Let the stripes of our Saviour that he bore on the cross avail for their healing. Holy Father, comfort them and us who stay isolated, hoping that this virus too shall pass. Bless those who help the sick and suffering. Keep them safe from danger. Strengthen our faith as fear and uncertainty grip world populations. Merciful Father, may relief come to ease economic dilemmas of nations and may millions of homes and families find you as the God who supplies all their needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We pray particularly for the land of our birth and we pray for the land in which we have now settled. Heavenly Father, please bless these lands. In your infinite love and power, forgive the nations of this world for their sins and their rejection of the God of heaven. We seek your face and your mercy and ask you humbly to heal the nations and the lands. Heal this world. You are God and there is no other. Our Father, let it be that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of your mighty name, great God. This we ask in faith believing in the name of Christ Jesus by the help of the Holy Spirit. We say Amen. Peace be with you. Please like and share and subscribe. Until the next time, this is Joel's Place in the Spiritual Lounge.